together. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Federal prosecutors have charged Jared Lee Loeffner with the attempted assassination of Arizona Congressmember Gabriel Giffords, as well as the murders of her aide, Gabe Zimmerman, and the chief federal judge of the state. Giffords, a Democrat representing the Tucson area, was shot in the back of the head at close range on Saturday morning outside a supermarket in Tucson, where she was holding an event called Congress on Your Corner to meet with constituents. After shooting Giffords, the gunman opened fire on the small crowd. In all, 20 people were shot, six were killed. The dead include U.S. District Judge John Roll, Giffords' aide Gabe Zimmerman, a nine-year-old girl born on 9-11, and three people in their late 70s. Other federal charges against Loeffner include two counts of attempting to kill a federal employee. More charges are expected. The court documents filed Sunday suggest the attack was a premeditated assassination attempt. The FBI says on an envelope, Loeffner wrote, I planned ahead my assassination and Giffords. He then signed the note. The envelope was kept in a safe at Loeffner's home alongside a letter from Giffords in 2007 thanking him for attending a meeting similar to the one he attacked on Saturday. While the motivation for the attack remains unclear, the picture emerging of Loeffner is of a severely disturbed 22-year-old with mental health issues. In September, Loeffner was suspended from Pena County Community College after five run-ins with pol campus police for disruptive behavior. One student, who attended class with him, wrote an email to friends saying, quote, We have a mentally unstable person in the class that scares the living crap out of me. He is one of those whose picture you see on the news after he's come into class with an automatic weapon, she wrote. YouTube videos and other Internet postings under his name suggest an obsession with bizarre anti-government grievances, including ramblings about currency policies and language control through grammar. Investigators are also exploring suspected links between Loeffner and American Resistance, a group known for white supremacist anti-immigrant rhetoric. Loeffner is scheduled to appear this afternoon in U.S. District Court in Phoenix. The charges filed on Sunday came hours after doctors in Tucson gave an update on Gifford's condition and said she's able to respond to simple commands following emergency brain surgery. She remains sedated and in critical condition. Doctors said the bullet traversed the left side of her brain, entering from back, exiting the front. This is trauma physician Peter Ree. Everybody's going to be cautious about overcalling it, but I am optimistic. I was optimistic yesterday when I saw the case and I saw the brain in this and the, and the amount of injury that had gone through. But uh, overall, this is about as good as it's going to get. You know, when you get shot in the head and the bullet goes through your brain, the chances of you living is very small, and the chances of you waking up and actually following commands is even much, more, uh, much smaller than that. So this so far has been a very good situation. Hopefully it'll stay that way, okay? Obviously, we don't know which way, which direction she's going to go. It's still very precarious at this time. The White House announced on Sunday that President Obama will observe a moment of silence for the victims at 11 Eastern time today. Hours after the shooting Saturday, Obama made a televised statement from the White House. We are still assembling all the facts, but we know that Representative Giffords was one of the victims. She is currently at a hospital in the area and she is battling for her life. We also know that at least five people lost their lives in this tragedy. Among them were a federal judge, John Roll, who has served America's legal system for almost 40 years, and a young girl who was barely nine years old. I've spoken to Arizona Governor Jan Brewer and offered the full resources of the federal government. A suspect is currently in custody. Uh, but we don't yet know what provoked this unspeakable act. Gabby Gidfords was a friend of mine. She is not only an extraordinary public servant, uh, but she is also somebody who is warm and caring. She is well-liked by her colleagues and well-liked by her constituents. Gabrielle Giffords is 40 years old. She was elected to Arizona's 8th Congressional District in 2006. She narrowly won re-election in November against her Tea Party-backed Republican opponent, Jesse Kelly, a former Marine who served in Iraq. 
In June, Kelly promoted a campaign event on his website that read, quote, Get on target for victory in November. Help remove Gabrielle Giffords from office. Shoot a fully automatic M-16 with Jesse Kelly. During the health care debate in 2009 and 2010, Giffords faced threats and acts of vandalism. A glass panel in her office was shattered, and at an outdoor event similar to the one where she was shot, a visitor dropped a gun. Giffords was also included on a controversial map issued by former vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin that included crosshairs on various districts. In a tweet, Palin urged supporters, don't retreat, reload. In March, Giffords appeared on MSNBC after the health care vote and spoke about the threats against her. We have had hundreds and hundreds of protesters over the course of the last several months. Our office corner has really become an area where the Tea Party movement congregates. And the rhetoric is incredibly heated, not just the calls, but the emails, the, 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 the slurs. So, I mean, things have really gotten spun up. I mean, you've got to think about it. Our democracy is a light, a beacon, really, around the world, because we affect change at the ballot box and not because of these, you know, outbursts of, of violence in certain cases and, this, and the yelling and the, you know, it's just, you know, change is, is important. It's a part of our process, but it's really important that we focus on the fact that we have a democratic process. Do you think Republican members of the House, the Republican leadership, should have spoken out more forcefully to denounce this violence, or are you satisfied with what they've said? For example, the minority leader John Boehner was on Fox News denouncing violence. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for all leaders, not just leaders of the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. There's certainly a lot of independents out there that they may not even not resonate towards, but community leaders, figures in our community to say, look, this, we can't stand for this. I mean, th this is a situation where I mean, people don't, I mean, they really, really need to realize that the rhetoric and firing people up and, you know, even things, for example, we're on Sarah Palin's targeted list, but the thing is that the way that she has it depicted has the crosshairs of a gun sight over our district. And when people do that, they've got to realize there's consequences to that action. Congressmember Giffords was also worried about her safety in recent days. Virginia Congressmember James Moran told The Washington Post that she told him just a week and a half ago that she was worried about the potential for violence. Moran said, quote, Gabby did tell me she was concerned. She did say it's really bad out there, particularly in a district like hers. She was very much troubled that Sarah Palin put her in the crosshairs, Congressmember Moran said. For more, we're going to Washington, D.C., to the Capitol Rotunda, where we're joined by Gifford's colleague, Arizona Congressmember Raul Grijalva. Over the past year, Congressmember Grijalva has also received numerous threats, including having a suspicious package covered in swastikas sent to his office and having a bullet shot through his district office in Yuma, Arizona. Congressmember Grijalva, welcome to Democracy Now! First, your reaction to the carnage in your community in Tucson. Yep. It's shock. It was. It's disbelief. It's uh, uh, frightening uh, and uh, very sobering. And uh, some uh, some gratitude that uh, many of the victims are are, are doing well, uh, and uh, and the optimism that is being expressed by the doctors regarding Gabby's recovery is uh, prayers answered and, and very good to hear. Uh, and for the people that, that, that were killed, uh, what a sad moment. Uh, and uh, you, you can't really fathom the, the amount of uh, uh, distress that has cost everybody, but you can uh, appreciate the fact that uh, for all of us it is now becoming a very sobering uh, time to think about not, not only what has happened, uh, but what, what we're going to do about this. Gabe Zimmerman, the social worker who was the aide to Congressmember Giffords, who was killed, you knew his family well. Yeah, uh, his mom, Emily. Uh, uh, the, the 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 world is so strange and and, and connected. Uh, uh, his mom was my uh, f first boss when I got a real job, and uh, for the city of Tucson, and uh, I consider her a dear friend. She just retired. Gabe was a good public servant and uh, uh, a young man with a great personal future and a great public future. And, uh, 
what a loss for all of us and all of us in our community. Tell us about Judge John Roll, who was killed. Forty years uh, in, in, as, as, uh, in the justice system, uh, Chief Justice, appointed by uh, First President Bush, uh, fair man, uh, many difficult cases, constantly pushing for resources because of uh, the, uh, the, the huge workload in that court uh, regarding issue, cases of immigration, uh, drug, uh, confis uh, drug cases, uh, horribly overworked court. And uh, John in front of the Senate and in front of uh, Congress uh, constantly pushing for not only resources but for attention to that region that w he felt uh, his court was under siege uh, given all the activity going around drugs and uh, Im immigration enforcement. And uh, an advocate, good family man, uh, and uh, admired by many, many people. Now, he himself was under protection, his family. He was a conservative judge. Um, but on the issue of immigration, uh, he had stood up for immigrants and was seriously threatened. Yeah, he's uh, he's fair, and I think uh, he also had some uh, difficult cases that he was going to preside over uh, uh, relative to immigration and ethnic studies in in, in the state, and uh, uh, I think as a consequence of the profile cases and his rulings, were, which were consistent with law, uh, he received those threats, and uh, uh, that's just. Uh, that just adds another chapter to this whole uh, sad and uh, frightening aspect to our political life and our public life now in, the, uh, in this community and, quite frankly, in this country.